Hey everybody, this is Ray Carcel, and welcome to the Century 3 Mall in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We are at the New Dimension Comics. I have the distinct pleasure now of talking with Ron Friends. Ron, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. One of your most popular characters was when you worked with Tom DeFalco and created Spider-Girl. Oh, okay. Yes, we're 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 passing through all the other stuff. Well, okay. well you've done so you've done so much. I just no, think really, it's okay. No, we're fine. No, really, no. None of none of the other stuff mattered. It was all crap. Go ahead. <laughs> you did Spider Girl. Seven okay. years on Thor, everybody. <laughs> you know, just. Right. I was gonna come to right Thor. Spider Girl. I was gonna come to Thor later. <laughs> Anyways, we'll start with Spider. Girl. she's underage. Right. I understand that. I wasn't talking about her in that aspect. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> Wait, when are they going to bring to make the character of age, by the way, for guys like me? Just out of curiosity. Uh, never. <laughs> if Tom and I have our way, she'll stay a teenager the way Peter Parker should have. But, you know, that's just us. <laughs> anyway, how does, the, how does Spider Girl come about? Uh, Spider Girl came about. Uh, Tom DeFalco uh, was working on the Spider books without me, which to this day hurts. Thanks for bringing it up. But uh, he was on the books when uh, Mary Jane was pregnant. And his brain would wander to what if they really pulled the trigger on that, had them have a baby. You know, he started thinking of it as a, as a little girl, and we're really not quite sure who came up with the idea of naming her May. Uh, it really wasn't us for the book necessarily, you know. It was something that was talked about on the Spider-Man books at the time. But it, it, they were ideas that, that Tom started to have, and uh, when he was offered a chance to do some what-if stories, he decided he wanted to kind of clear that out of his, uh, of his mental locker, and he's, that was one of the ones he wanted to do. What if Spider-Man had a Spider-Girl? And uh, at the time, I believe I was over at DC working on Superman, but always was eager to fit in a job with the Falco anytime I could. And uh, he contacted me, and we, did, we ended up doing two what-ifs. One was 105 with uh, Spider-Girl, introducing Spider-Girl, and the other one was a, uh, actually touched on our Thor stuff. It was, uh, I forget what the what if was actually called, but it was basically what if Tom and Ron hadn't left Thor was really the, <laughs> the gist of it. But, uh, and we just had a lot of fun with them. Just figured they were one-shot little stories, but, uh, but Spider-Girl actually did, you know, started a groundswell. We got mail, and it, it was one of those things that Bob Harris, who was the editor-in-chief at the time, uh, gave us the go-ahead. Originally, MC2 was supposed to be an experiment wherein they would be bagged, uh, three books in, in the plastic bags, uh, uh, to the major chains. Uh, the sales department never really followed through on any of that, uh, but they were supposed to be books to introduce new readers to the Marvel Universe through the second generation of characters and stuff. And uh, So it was kind of a shame that it never played through the way it was supposed to, but nobody thought Spider-Girl would be around 13, 14 years later. You know, and uh, it just recently wrapped her up, and I, I don't know whether we'll ever get back to the character again or not. I mean, the 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 current pretender who swiped the name isn't doing all that well, so you know, I, I don't think anybody's necessarily going to forget May anytime too soon. So hopefully not. Anyway, very cool. Now, of course, as as you mentioned, you did work for on Thor for seven years, and had a, a very good run there with Tom. Uh, I told you I was going to get to it. Yeah, you you took that one back. That was very good. You turned that around on me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> How was it to work on a, a god in Norse mythology, of course, who, who Norse mythology is kind of laid out and to create new adventures for this, for this kind of one-dimensional character? Uh, well, one, we never really saw him as one-dimensional. The only real interesting, fun thing about going on Thor was that DeFalco was sure he couldn't write Thor originally. He was more comfortable with uh, average guy type characters, Spider-Man, he loves the thing, characters like that, that he can really relate to uh, on, a, on a ground level. So he, he was, it was a challenge for him to write Thor, but it was a challenge that I think he met and, uh, and, and excelled in. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it because we, we were both real students and fans of uh, the Lee and Kirby stuff, and Thor is pure Lee and Kirby uh, you know it's one of those characters that they they did so much to build the foundation that you you don't uh, what Walt did was genius as far as going back and really tapping into the original myths but you really don't need to do that because they had created such a, a tapestry of their own mythology uh, before Lee and Kirby left that title that you could you could do books and stories for years just based on the mythology that they set up just with their Asgard. And that's kind of what we were paying more attention to and just doing, uh, you know, science fiction and fantasy oriented stories that way. So, yeah, it, but it, it's, it was great fun. I mean, we were on it for seven years because the ideas kept flowing and our editor was happy with what we were doing. And that was back when there was uh, something called the newsstand. 
We had newsstand sales that were very strong, and uh, we had a great time. I mean, we we weren't done yet. We we left to go do Thunderstrike, and Thunderstrike fell victim to uh, all that financial stuff that was going on at Marvel at the time with the bankruptcy and everything, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, we, we could still be doing Thor stories if they would have let us, you know. Now, of course, you mentioned uh, Thunderstrike. You got you bringing you bringing him back now for a mini series here with Marvel. Again, working with Tom on him. Uh, how was it to bring back this character now? You know, a decade and a half after his initial introduction into the Marvel universe. Uh, it, it was it was a surprise actually because uh, Tom DeFalco sent out an email to the powers that be uh, as Spider Girl was wrapping up and just saying, "Is anybody interested in and in Ron Friends and I doing any other projects?" And one of the answers we got back from uh, David Gabriel, who's the VP of uh, Direct Sales, I believe, was, I'd like to see a, I, I know I'd like to see a Thunderstrike miniseries. And the next time Tom DeFelco was in New York, we found out it was already on the schedule. And we hadn't pitched anything. So we kind of on the fly made decisions based on whether or not we really wanted to bring back Eric. And we, we both have a problem with the fact that characters don't stay dead anymore. <laughs> And we've both lived a long enough life to know that it's kind of a cheat to, to bring back a dead character uh, because there, there are all those other ways to, to, to honor the character. And since he did, in the original series, have a son named Kevin, you know, we decided that uh, we, we had played with the idea in MC2, kind of doing the 616 version of, of Kevin taking over as Thunderstrike. And that's basically what we're playing with. The five issues uh, tend to be a protracted origin story. By the end of the fifth issue, he is uh, the final form of the character that he will become and, uh, and hopefully become a, a working part of the Marvel Universe as it exists today. We'll see what happens. Now, do you think that this miniseries may turn into a monthly down the road? I have no idea. I, these days, with sales and uh, being uh, the way they are, you, you can't take anything to the bank. Uh, there, there's been some loose talk about it, but nothing solid. And uh, it would be terrific if it could. I mean, certainly, Tom and I, we tend to uh, create and work on things for the long term if we're given the opportunity. Uh, so there, there's definitely plenty to do with the character. I mean, whether or not that actually happens, I, I have no idea. That's up to the uh, to the, the the readers and the buyers and the powers that be. Do you think it maybe opens the door for uh, the Thor core, maybe, or that too, or the I different? Actually, way? actually, that was one of the things I I told the Falco. I said if 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 we would get a second mini series or if we would go to series, one of the first things I'd like to do is touch back on concepts like the Thor core, and and have some fun with uh, a lot of the stuff that's going on in, in in comics these days, both at Marvel and DC. I just don't strike me as being much fun. You know, there's a very dour, very serious, very very serious subject matters, and uh, I I think it might be time to cut loose and have a little bit of fun and and you know handle you know handle some fantasy stories and and mix some of those characters up i mean that that future thor character dargo was very popular at the time i mean i'd, I'd love to check in with him you know so i there may be some other things to do on that on that end of it so uh, thanks for bringing that up because yeah that's something i've been thinking about yeah yeah last question uh you mentioned newsstands now you're starting to see digital comics and all this you know the technology is constantly changing how does that affect you guys as an, as an artist and and the, as the medium is progressing technology wise uh, it, it doesn't really uh, when spider girl was primarily uh, for for Marvel digital it didn't really change the way we conceived or executed the stories uh, I, I think the difference is in whether or not you do things for the mass market or whether you do things for the the more enclosed direct sales market. And Tom DeFalco has always been a mass market thinker. Uh, you know, he started working in comics when mass market was, was the thing. I thankfully got into comics while there was still a mass market to consider. And we, we tend to do uh, fairly mass market concepts and handle them in a way that, that, that is all ages accessible and everything. So I, I would welcome the opportunity to get more into the mass market, whether it's through the internet or through redistribution of these of these books, you know, wider distribution of the books, I would welcome it because I, I think we've been ignoring the younger market uh, in a way that has kept us from you know uh, creating that next generation of fans, and without them, we're we're going to wind down and die, you know, and uh, nobody wants to see that happen. Uh, I know I don't. 
No, sir. And Ron, I just want to thank you for your time. And uh, again, Thunderstrike, it's on sale now, the first two issues of the five-issue miniseries, and hopefully, sir, it'll turn into a monthly. Well, that would be terrific, yes. But uh, at, at least for now, it'll be the five issues, and uh, please buy it, and hopefully, if you enjoy it, let Marvel know. And that'll help it turn into a monthly. So. Ron, thanks for your time. Thank you very much.